know what, actually for this video, I'm just gonna, you know, put this on. Thumbnail. So this is gonna be a great video. And I didn't reshoot this on purpose because I love the way it came out the first time. It was organic and it's actually how I think and it was a great way of saying it. But my audio was messed up. So apologies for the audio. But it's still a video worth watching. Hello everyone. So I just finished watching all three episodes of The Last of Us. I have played this game multiple times. Um, I have loved this game with a passion ever since it first came out. Me and my friend Kyle played it. Played at least the last piece together and we kind of got to process through the ending, which if you know, you know. I have a lot of thoughts on these episodes. Most of them are coming from episode three and most are positive, but I do have some disappointments. This is a, you know, 30, 40 hour gameplay game. <laughs> it's impossible to fit all of it in, you know, in a TV show. The scripting for a TV show in a game is obviously gonna be very different as well with cutscenes of dialogue and you, the player, are interacting and doing a lot of the, the action scenes and stuff. So you have to, you have to write it differently for a different medium. There have been a lot of changes and a lot of them I'm okay with, I am disappointed that I didn't get to see them break Robert's arm. I can't. You just give me a couple of <laughs> Because that part in the game is uh, pretty iconic. It hurts. And it doesn't even happen to you and it still hurts. But a lot of the other changes are feel very natural to me. I, I haven't noticed a lot that like takes me out of the story or, uh, you know, makes me think, well, that's not what was in the book, or that sort of attitude, you know what I mean? And there were some pretty drastic ones, namely Sarah being mixed. Um, usually a race change, as we've seen with Scooby-Doo and some other movies and TV shows in the past, can be super controversial. Um, I think it's really easy to be disrespectful when doing that, because either there's no reason for it, and it's it just seems like virtue signaling, or there is a reason for it, and sometimes that reason can be condescending. So it, I think there's a fine line of getting that thing right, where you race bend, uh, just like gender bend or anything else when you're changing something in the script. I think they did that fine. They did that very well. From here on out, uh, there are obviously going to be spoilers for The Last of Us if you haven't watched it or you're going to watch it or you don't want to be spoiled. The next biggest change that weirdly didn't bother me that I thought might, and I kind of had spoiled for me, but it doesn't really change the story a whole lot. It's just a different perspective. One of the best ambiances of The Last of Us is the spores. So when you're walking through like the... Um, like the, the sewers, or you're walking through those like buildings that are all collapsed in on each other, or the um, the hotel, or when you have to go into the basement and turn on the generator, scariest thing I've ever played in my life. The spores are such an iconic thing in my head because that tells me as the player something's about to happen and you better watch your back right now. You know what I mean? Very serious get your crap together, something's gonna happen. So it became like a thing, and obviously the loading screen is spores. Like that was part of the whole thing. So to change it to more of like a slime mold or to like a regular fungus, I understand why they did it and coming from like the throat or whatever, um, which again makes sense with the actual cordyceps fungus and i'm not mad at it um it's actually kind of cool to see it from a different perspective but i do miss the spores and the gas masks they have thrown a lot of like bones as far as that goes um like the uh like the lighting and the scenery and all that stuff somehow is like they spared no expense on this like this is the most beautiful tv show i've ever seen of the most beautiful video game i've ever seen and somehow they made it even better i don't get it Props to you guys. It's very dusty. It's very like, you know, the, the flashlight shines around and it looks like a lightsaber because there's stuff in the air, there's dust. There's even some close-ups of like someone looking away and it's like very, very dusty and it looks like spores. They called it out. Like if you've played the game and you've watched the show, you know exactly which, which scene they're talking about. I was very skeptical of Pedro Pascal at first because he's in everything. I didn't want this to be like another Tom Holland plays Nathan Drake kind of thing where like he's not the right personality type, he's not the right body type, he's not the right age, he's not the right anything. And they cast him anyway because he's popular at the time. So I was very, very scared that this was going to be that. I still don't see Joel and Ellie when I see these two actors together. Um, I see the actors. Um, but I think that's because I haven't watched the whole show yet and I've seen more content of the actual video game characters than the actors. 
Um, they're doing an excellent, excellent job so far portraying the characters. Joel's voice is down perfect and mannerisms actually. I'm, it's growing on me. So most of the other things I want to talk about are from episode three. A lot of positive, a lot of not really positive or negative, just thoughts. And then I have some disappointments. So positive, Nick Offerman, <laughs> well done, hands down. He's one of my favorite actors anyway. And to see him in this role and encapsulate who Bill is as a character. Uh, Ellie. Hey, what are you, Joel? Bill. What are you doing? Bill. Turn around and get on your knees. Just calm down a second. Turn around. All right. Get on your knees. Don't Put his own spin on it that makes sense. Like he grew that character and that character's only in it for like a very short period of time. So props, respect for the work. Very, very, very well done. Um, the biggest controversy, the, the biggest projected controversy of this episode is that we actually see Frank. Now, Frank is only referenced if you are paying attention in the game and you're picking up like letters and stuff and it's the suicide note and like they go like, oh, poor bastard or something like that. I forget. Bill, on the other hand, is a very entertaining character. <laughs> so um, this is kind of going to come in two parts. First part, it's not that controversial to me that they showed Frank or that they turned Frank into like an actual character, not just a reference. Um, there's already so much in the last of us game that they could there's not really a way to fit frank in there so that's i'm okay with that with some exposition backstory knowing that uh neil Druckmann wrote it so therefore it's canon and I, he's an excellent excellent writer him and the team that wrote this the only part where that's that's irking me just a little bit isn't necessarily specific to this episode but so far, the story feels so much softer. And I was talking with a friend about this too, and he was like, well, yeah, like when you're playing the game, there, Joel has a lot of rage. Like Joel's a monster, <laughs> like in both the scary sense and that he's not a good person, but B, and that he he gets things done and he's he's angry and he's motivated. And in this, he's a little softer and he's he's not quite like that. Again, I haven't seen the whole thing. The whole thing hasn't even dropped yet. So that's not really a complaint or a po it's not a positive or a negative. It's just kind of an observation. Um, but the same applies for this episode. It was much softer because Bill, imagine Bill at the very first part of of the, the, the episode where he's like, not today, you new world order, blah, blah, whatever he says. That's Bill all the time. Bill is a hoarder. Bill has guns. Bill doesn't trust anybody. Bill, like, which is who Bill is as a character. And he obviously softens up a lot through the episode for reasons. But I really, really wanted to see angry Bill and angry Joel interact and then throw Ellie in there. That's like easily some of the best dialogue of the whole game comes from that trio. And we didn't get to see any of that. So that's my disappointment is that I was, that's one part I was really looking forward to, especially knowing Nick Offerman is playing Bill. I think we missed a big opportunity there, but they took it in a different direction. I couldn't tell you which one would be better. I mean, I, I really, really wish we could have seen some of that, that trio working together or not getting along and trying to work together or whatever you want to call it. But that's my biggest complaint is that we didn't get to see Bill and Joel and Ellie interact the same way we did in the game. Now, Frank, uh, as a character, he didn't captivate me a whole lot. Like he didn't, it's not my favorite character. Um, it seemed a little, uh, not stereotypical, but a little predictable. I mean, obviously what The Last of Us is known for is being unpredictable. Um, but at the end, they both died, not just him. And they faked us out because he gets shot and then they fade away as he's like passing out. So it was well written. Like the whole like, like formality taming the beast thing. Uh, I don't know. I, I could take it or leave it. But it was a, still a good episode. It was a good episode. I will watch the TV show again. I hope I can buy this on Blu-ray somewhere in 4K or whatever because I want to own this. I don't want to have to pay for HBO Max if I want to watch it. A good episode. My biggest disappointment is that I just didn't get to see Joel, Ellie, and Bill interact together because that is hilarious in the game. And if you've never played it or watch it, A, play it. But B, go find somebody on Twitch or YouTube that has played that section and watch them do it. It's hilarious. The one other thing I can think of as of these three episodes is clickers. I love the idea of clickers. It is so good. And uh, I can't remember which one of the writers, it's probably Neil Druckmann, I may be getting that wrong, uh, was quoted as saying, they're like, I want a sound 
that will strike fear into anybody who hears it without even knowing what what is making this sound. I want it to be that intimidating. And they came up with the sound for a clicker. <laughs> together terrifying in the show they're a little corny <laughs> i hate to say that like i love the depiction and i love that seeing like the the shell on their head like the fungus shell which is the reason you can't actually shoot them in the game you have to like hit them first or stab them in the neck or something like that because they got a shell on their head in this version of the game they don't actually have a brain left i don't think i think it's because they'll, they'll like cut the skin and then it's just fungus underneath so it doesn't matter if you shoot the head there's nothing there I think that's why you can't shoot him in this. I haven't, I don't think I've gotten that far yet to have that question answered. But in the game, at least, it's uh, it's not quite the same kind of fungus, like I was saying, it's, it's spores. So it's still a human in there, like still a brain functioning, more or less. And you have to, you know, you can't shoot it in the head. You gotta stab it in the neck because there's the whole shell uh, on the shield on the head. The way they're introduced in this, I mean, they get my heart pumping. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I've seen, I've, I've seen this part of the story before in the Boston Museum. The way they kind of scream right at them seemed a little corny to me, but I am, I'm probably kind of just nitpicking here, so. Um, all in all, solid, I'm gonna say eight out of 10. Not that I didn't enjoy it, but I need room to go higher because we have not even scratched the surface of what this game is. We haven't gotten to Colorado. We haven't gotten to see the rotting people in the, in the dorms, in the bathtubs from the school that like couldn't get away. We haven't seen David. We haven't seen, uh, tell them I'm Ellie, the girl who broke your effing finger. What am I supposed to tell the others now? Ellie. What? Tell them that Ellie is the little girl that broke your fucking finger. We haven't seen Joel get stabbed. There's so much more. To, I, I, I'm very shocked that this is gonna be only, I think it's only like a 10 episode season, right? I mean, I haven't heard anything else, but, um, I'm gonna say eight out of 10 so far because I haven't seen the rest. So that's my uh, that's my take on it. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if this is a bad opinion. <laughs> Let me know what you think of the Bill and Frank story versus the Bill and Frank implication in the game. I would love to hear all your thoughts. Um, sub if you don't mind, that helps me out. And I will be doing some more of these as the show comes out as well. So um, yeah, thanks for watching.